Hi everybody and welcome to this short tutorial on how to sew a flat felled seam. And yes, it is, easy, it is easier than you think. So why would we use a flat felled seam in sewing? Well, to start with, it's a strong, sturdy stitch. Most commonly you'd find it in jeans, dress shirts, denim jackets, any sort of clothing that is going to require wear and tear, heavy usage, um, and in spots where you might find it weakening. Um, so definitely around seams, um, you know, pants, things that get a lot of wear. Um, so a flat felt seam acts to stabilize the seam. It encloses the raw edges. It makes it very neat and tidy, um, less chance for unraveling, fraying, um, coming loose, breaking. Um, and for people that struggle with um, irritation of seams and tags and things like that, it can be much less irritating on the skin during wear. So what do you need? Well, you need your fabric of choice. Uh, and that would in generally mean heavier weight fabrics. So things that would go on in pants like denims, ducks, drills, heavyweight cottons, that sort of thing. But medium weight cottons and dress shirting and things like that um, also work quite well. You need scissors. I have two pairs of scissors. I've got bigger fabric scissors and then I've got short, sharp little um, thread cutting scissors. You need a sewing machine. You can do this by hand, but I'm a big fan of making my life easier. We're going with the sewing machine. You need thread in whichever color you like. You need an ironing board and an iron. You need some pins and a ruler or a tape measure also comes in handy. So here we have my sewing machine. It's a pretty basic model, but it does the job cup of tea, most important part of the sewing process as far as I'm concerned. A few pins, my very cute plain fabric that I used on a project for my little baby. A little ruler, so that's a seam measuring ruler. You can see it's got loads of different little measurements on the side, but any basic ruler or tape measure will do the job. My two pairs of scissors there and my little tabletop ironing board and my iron. So that's the basic setup that I use when sewing. And before you start, it's good to get all of your area prepared as much as you can. So set up your ironing board, turn on your iron, make sure it's got water in it if it's a steam iron. Iron your fabric. It's really important that your fabric is ironed and ready to use. Um, there's nothing worse than spending all that time and effort making a seam on crinkled fabric, which then when you go to try and match it with something else, it's the wrong shape or you've missed a section or it's misshapen because it's not been prepared properly to start with. Make sure your machine and bobbin are threaded with enough. There's nothing worse than playing chicken with your bobbin and having to start again because you've run out of thread. Also check your pattern to see what your seam allowance is and make sure you're going to be able to do what you want to do. And if you have the capabilities to add a little bit more seam allowance to make your life easier, keep that in mind. And as I said before, make yourself a beverage. It's thirsty work. So let's get sewing. To start with, let's place the wrong sides of the fabric together. Then we're going to pin the fabric together I'm a bit of a non-pinner, particularly with stable fabrics like cotton, which is what I'm using in here. And you'll see in the video to follow that I actually don't pin. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, but if you're a beginner, it's probably a good habit to get into pinning your fabric together. Then we sew along the fabric, keeping your seam allowance straight as you can. Once you've done that, and you've taken it off your sewing machine, just bring it closer to your iron um, on a flat sort of spare surface 
and just lightly separate your seams. Um, you'll see me do this in the next video. Um, and that's because what you want to do then is trim one seam to one eighth of an inch from your seam line or as close as you can get. Um, and once you've done that, iron your long seam over the top of the seam you've just trimmed. So this is a visual demonstration of what I said. So just doing a little bit of back stitching there to make sure my threads don't unravel. You can see no pins. Now that shiny tape there is just a little hack that a lot of sewers use, which is it's just a visual representation of your seam allowance. And the good thing is like it's just washi tape. You can take it off and change it as you need to. And so now that I have finished my sewing and my seams are done, you can see I'm just lightly um, spreading the seam. I'm measuring there with my little seam allowance ruler, which is a very handy little gadget to have. Sewing's full of handy little gadgets. This one is relatively inexpensive though, so it's a good one to get hold of. So that's around about an eighth of an inch. And then just follow along trimming that entire side of your fabric. Um, this is to help reduce the bulk in the seam um, and give you a nice tidy flat finish. So not a lumpy bulky one at the end, which helps your um, sewing look more professional and much nicer to look at and to wear. Okay, and you can see I've got one long side and one short side, so we're ready to go. So continuing on, we're going to I tuck that long seam under itself. So we're gonna enclose that shorter seam within it. So we're gonna try and roll it over so it's coming back in on itself. So you can iron or pin, whichever is your preference. I tend to pin the first bit and then I just iron the rest. And I like that because the iron then kind of sets the seam in place. Um, but you can also do both. You can iron and pin, iron or pin, or you can just do it by eye and see how you go. So once you've done that, we want to go back to the sewing machine and we want to sew along the edge of the tuck seam to within one eighth of an inch or as close as you can to the folded edge of that new seam. And go as slowly as you can. It's quite hard and takes a lot of concentration. So to keep that in a nice, neat, straight line, but it's worth the effort because it looks really good at the end. Once you're finished, you want to trim your loose ends and admire your great work. Like this is a good technique to learn and to have in your repertoire. And it's um, a really good one for making sure that your garments are robust. They look nice and neat and professional and they're going to last the test of time. And then continue on with your sewing project. So here's a visual of what I was talking about previously. You can see that I'm just tucking that long edge over the top of the short cut seam and folding it over. And then I'm just gonna pin the top section there to keep it in place. And then with my trusty iron, I'm going to try and set that fold into place, which is gonna make my life easier when I go back to the sewing machine to stitch down that end. Be very careful with the iron and your little fingers. I have burnt myself more than once. Can be a bit of a dangerous hobby if you're distracted. And then, so you can see that seam is more or less staying put without too much assistance. And then this is quite hard to see, but I am going 
as close to the edge as I can um, following the where the needle is. Um, this is kind of one of those practice makes perfect sort of situations. Um, and the more you do it, the better you will get at it. Um, but just take your time, make sure that you reverse your stitch so that it doesn't come loose. And then this is the end result. So as you can see, that looks like a pretty nice flat, tidy seam. You can see it's not going to go anywhere. And also on the inside, so this would be what is rubbing up against your skin when you're wearing some clothes. You can see it's nice and smooth. There's no loose edges or anything that's going to rub and make the experience unpleasant. So that is the very basic tutorial on how to do a flat felled seam. And I hope you'll give it a go. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.